If you're a parent or planning to become one, we're going to show you a new high-tech eye exam. It's for babies and toddlers, and it can help you catch potential eye problems before they even start. It does this by measuring their brain waves. Everybody should have their eye tested, but given the fact that you had a family history of an eye problem, especially, you may have heard of an EEG. That's what this is like. Now we'll turn the machine on. This machine is looking at what the brain gets. This will tell us if the two eyes are functioning the same or if they're functioning differently. Could your baby be at risk for a potential eye problem without you even realizing it? Well, now there's a brand new eye exam. It measures a baby's brain waves. It can help parents spot a problem early on. John and Beth decided to have the test performed on their daughter, Addison, because of a concerning family history. Addie's dad had an eye condition that needed surgery, so that's a concern. My condition was uh, superior oblique muscle palsy, but basically what that is, is it's a lazy eye. And in my particular case, it was very difficult to be able to tell and was not diagnosed until much later in my life. As a result of this, I developed a severe problem with my neck because of not being able to focus my eyes in a specific way, and then that ended up causing me to have a herniated disc in my neck. I believe that the condition my husband had is genetic. With a young child, it's difficult to tell because they can't tell you if they're seeing some double vision, so you might not know. I hope that there is no trouble today with Addie's test. If there's any damage there, we will further test it and get it corrected. Hey guys, good to see you. You ready to go back there? You ready? Let's come on, let's go play. Guys, you know what we're here for. Uh, we're going to test Addie's eyes. Everybody should have their eye tested, but given the fact that you had a family history of an eye problem, especially, this becomes really important. We're going to use this really cool machine that's going to show her a video. And then in between the video, there'll be black and white lines. That's when the test is really taking place. And then the video comes back just around the time she would lose attention. So we're going to hook on the electrodes. You may have heard of an EEG. That's what this is like. Oh, boy. Yay. Now we'll turn the machine on. And we'll see if we can get Addie to pay attention to this. This machine is looking at what the brain gets. This will tell us if the two eyes are functioning the same or if they're functioning differently. Bit by bit, she's going to see smaller and smaller black stripes. When she reaches the limit of what her brain sees, we know we've got it. She's doing a fabulous job looking at the TV screen. Great, we're all done. Addie did wonderfully. Now the only thing we have left are the results. John and Beth are here with little Addison as well as Dr. David Granite. He's a pediatric ophthalmologist from UC San Diego. Welcome to all of you and Dr. Granite. Yeah. So first things first, Jim, if you're screening someone in your office, minimal technology, what are you going to do? You know, as a pediatrician, we're kind of limited to what we have. We have our little flashlight that, you know, these things are, what, 50 years old? Yeah. And uh, we try to look in their eyes, and of course the babies usually won't cooperate. They're looking all over the place. You know, maybe use our fingers to track, and, you know, and we've got the eye charts and stuff. And of course, you can't tell me if you see, see any of that, can you? And that's the problem. We, we don't know if the eyes are communicating with the brain. And so that's a problem with kids before they can talk, but that's where something like the EEG comes into play and what you did with Addison in the office. Absolutely. As Dr. Shears was saying, these kids around two, this is not the time we call it the terrific twos, right? I mean, this is a hard time to examine someone. Addie's awesome, and she let him look. Yeah. But only about one out of every three kids ever gets checked because it's so hard. So our job was to give new tools to the pediatrician to allow them to check what's going on with the eyes and the brain. <laughs> She loves and, the and so what cards. you did is you had Addison looking at pictures while she was hooked up to what's called an EEG, which is an electroencephalogram. And one of the things that, that I want you to look at, this is an animation of an optic nerve. And what happens is the optic nerve travels from the eye and sends a signal to your brain if it's working properly. That's and that's right. essentially what you're measuring is that signal that should be working equally in both eyes, right? Yeah, absolutely. The eye is just a camera. And then you have to get it back to the CPU back here, the central processing system, the computer. You need a cable to connect. And the way you need to know is if she's seeing or not is you put an electrode back there and the brain waves tell us what she can see or what she can't see. And, and what is amblyopia? Amblyopia is when the brain isn't using an eye. You can imagine, for example, if I needed glasses in one eye and not the other, or the eye looked over to the side, your brain would say, the heck with it. I'm not going to use that eye and only use the good eye. Mm -hmm. And when that happens as a kid, if you're not using it, you lose it. And you can't get it back as an adult because the brain isn't plastic then. So you need to identify these problems as a kid. You need to treat them as a kid because they're treatable. John, 
Addie's dad, if he had had this detected when he was a kid, he wouldn't have had neck surgery. Imagine, he had spine surgery for a problem that if it was detected at this age, never would have happened. Yeah, I think there's four million people out there that are blind in one eye because of amblyopia because it didn't get caught soon enough. That's absolutely right. About 100,000 kids a year. Yeah. And it's, it's unconscionable almost because we have ways to treat these kids. We can make a difference. We can restore sight to the blind child with simple techniques, things like glasses or a patch for heaven's sakes. Or give parents mm -hmm. a chance to take a breath and say, okay, Addie's eyes look okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the big things we did. Were her results normal? Were her results abnormal? Yeah, and, and her parents don't know yet. I think that we have uh, a, a picture we're gonna show of her results right here. And these, this is what it looks like when you look at those black and white little stripes. These are the big stripes, like that big E on the eye chart, and here are the little stripes. And this is someone who's normal. You can see the right eye and the left eye here in different colors. They work together. In Addie, we look at the right eye and the left eye, and you can see the left eye is doing great, even as those stripes got small, like the little letters on the eye chart. The right eye didn't do as well. And so that separation between the two eyes tells us that Addie actually may be really having a problem in her right eye. But Dr. Granite, this is actually is a screening tool though, right? So this doesn't tell us, oh, there's something wrong with her eyes. It's more, there could be something wrong. We need to take a closer look. Absolutely. This is a screening test, like a mammography or a hearing test. It would be, imagine if you were five years old and read the eye chart and you had trouble with one eye. You wouldn't know what was wrong or even if something really was wrong. Sometimes kids just don't do their best when they take the test. So what this means is that she should have an eye exam, a full-blown eye exam. So, Dr. Grant, you're, you're willing to do a full follow-up exam with Addison? Willing? Uh, you bet I'm willing to do And then, real quick takeaway, if you did find a problem with Addison or another child, what can you do at this stage? Right, well, the, the, what you want to do is identify what the problem is, and then you intervene with pretty simple techniques at this point. Sometimes it's as simple as glasses, and we can actually tell whether or not Addie needs glasses and exactly the prescription without her saying a word. Sometimes it's a patch that forces her to use the other eye, and if she has the problem like her dad has, it might be surgical intervention. But boy, I'd rather do it now than when she's 30 years old and has a neck problem. Yeah, so, so early detection at this age, it could be as simple as an iPad. Right, you know? and if I, if I get her with amblyopia at age 10 or 12, it's not fixable. I need to get it now, and for learning purposes, for school, I want her to be ready. I want her to have both of her eyes available to do everything she needs to do in life at this most important developmental time. First off, this screening tool, you can do it at six months of age when they're really, really right. small. That's when we do it in my office, and it's a great thing. Get it diagnosed early, and that way they don't grow into a problem you can't fix. So early detection for you parents out there. Dr. Granite, thank you so much. Addison, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After the break, if you and your kids hate going to the dentist, you need to see this. We're going to show you the latest break.